Hello, Nancy Golden here. Today's the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm so glad to be starting this Lenten journey with you today. Today is day one, Ash Wednesday. So let's go ahead and get started. Ash Wednesday traditionally marks the beginning of the first day of Lent, an important event in the Christian liturgical calendar. Lent is a time of solemn self-reflection and confession that parallels what Jesus experienced during his 40 days in the wilderness. While we will be exploring and reflecting on the meaning of that wilderness journey and applying it in our own lives, today our focus will be on Ash Wednesday, which is also referred to as the Day of Ashes. You may have participated in Lent as part of your church or de denomination tradition, or you may have at some point in the past been startled and wondered why you see people walking around with a black colored cross smudged across their foreheads. You may have deduced that it has a religious meaning associated with the Christian faith. And in fact, you would be correct. So let's take today to understand the significance of this special and solemn day in the Christian faith. Interestingly enough, preparation for Ash Wednesday begins almost a year prior. Palm Sunday is another important holiday in the Christian church, which commemorates Jesus's final entrance into Jerusalem. And that's found in Mark 2 verses 1 through 11. His followers greeted him in grand style as the coming king, and people waved palm branches in homage to him. In many church traditions, church leaders hand out palm branches on Palm Sunday, and the congregation replicates the scene from scripture during the worship service. The palm branches are then gathered and burned, and the ashes are set aside for use on Ash Wednesday the following year. The priest or pastor then mixes this substance with oil to make the sign of the cross. Depending on a person's church tradition, the imparting of this symbol can occur in one of a variety of ways. Often they attend a mass or church service and it is a time of both personal and communal repentance. A message centering around Genesis 3.19 is frequently given, and afterward, the congregation is invited to come forward to receive their ashes. The priest or pastor will typically say, repent and believe in the gospel, or remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return as they use their thumb dipped in ashes to draw the cross on the person's forehead. Whether you are able to participate in the actual receiving of the ashes or not, what matters most is what is going on in your own heart. Ash Wednesday is an important reminder of our need for repentance and our mortality, but also that through our repentance and obedience to God comes everlasting life. Amen. So today's activity, the story of Ash Wednesday can be found in the following verses. Take a few minutes to meditate on them. Genesis 2, 7 informs us that we are created from dust. God formed man from the dust of the ground and then his very breath brought us to life. Genesis 3, 19 tells us the consequences of the fall when man and women and women were cast out of the garden, that we were made from dust and to dust we shall return. Psalm 51, seven through 10 is how we should respond. David's cry for repentance is also our own. Reread the words of David in Psalm 51. Create in me a pure heart, O God. That's Psalm 51, 10. And reflect on those words. Rejoice in the fact that while we all need to repent, we are not in it alone. David calls out to God for help and so can we. The Psalms are a great example for us in how to pray. Take a few minutes and pray Psalm 51 to the one who loves you beyond measure. I'm so glad we got to start this journey together today. And I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.